after class yesterday or during class or during and after. So there's a lot to look at. I want to point out what you're looking at, though. These are the results we got. I'll blow it up nice and big so you're focusing only on that. That's what we got on Wednesday. Of our combined sample, I've got the numbers down here somewhere, we'll play with them in a second. 7% of your sample was red, 18% was brown, 18% was orange, 14% was blue, 28% was green, 15% was yellow. Somebody, I think it was Harrison, said he never gets red. I'm not surprised. Only 7% of our sample was red. And if you have a bag that consists of like 40 candies, you're going to expect, what is that, 2.8 or something red per bag? That's pretty small. And you put a margin of error on that 2.8, it's like, well, zero is not that far away from 2.8. So I, you know, that's not, not surprising at all. But did anybody in here, was anybody else, didn't get any of the one of the six colors? That was the worst English sentence I've ever phrased. Let me try it again. <laughs> did anybody else here only get five colors in their bag and not all six? I thought there was one or two people that had zero. Maybe they're not here. Well, that's totally fine. Four, they, there are some folks who couldn't get out of bed because there's no one. They think it's still 7.30. That's okay. Um, so anyway. Here's what we got. Here, put that over here. This is what I've gotten over time. So this indicates about 2006 to 2014, so roughly eight years of, of data collection. Okay, so you look at this, you look at this. Those are not the same. Some of them are off by 5%. You know, this is off by 5%, the browns. Oranges is off by 2 7 in the blue. Okay, now this is to be expected, I think. I mean, even though we had all of you cracking your bags open and putting together into one large sample, there's still deviation in the sample. I mean, that's to be expected. That's to be expected. So I don't want to compare you guys to what has happened over the past eight years. You guys are actually part of that graph. I, you guys are in that graph. I don't want to compare to that. I want to compare them to what Mars says should be in the bags. That's what Mars said should be in the bags. Why aren't they off <coughs> one six? Why what? Why aren't they off one six? Because that's what they tell me they're supposed to be in the bag. I don't know. Okay. Some of the some of the flavors are like the ones. Uh, they don't post them on the website anymore. I used to have a collection of them. They might still be buried in my in my folder somewhere. No, no, they're right back to me. They write back to me every three months. I, I we're gonna mail one out, letter out to them today. I've got it over here. Um, we're gonna have you guys sign it. It's official. And depending on the flavor, <clears throat> the peanuts, for example, I think only have five colors, and they're a fifth, a fifth, a fifth, a fifth, a fifth. Um, Skittles are like that. Skittles have five colors, 20% of each, according to their, their literature. For some reason, these milk chocolate ones have these goofy, that's the designation they have. You should have 24% blue. What do we see? We saw 14. Okay, that's, that's significant deviation. That's 10% difference. 10 percentage points difference. You should have 20% orange. We saw 18. I can live with that. That's probably just sampling error. 18% brown should be 13. Eh, that's kind of getting wiggle room there. Like, I don't know how, is that too far away? I don't know. 7% red to 13. Okay, that's about half of what it should be. That's about half of what it should be. 15 to 14. I can probably live with that. 28 to 16. Eh, that's pretty far too, isn't it? That's pretty far to 12 percentage points off. And then we did blue, we did blue. So it looks like some of those are pretty far away from what they should be. But the thing is, is that as you will read in your exam, my gut says, ah, something's up. And I wrote a letter to him. You'll see why momentarily. But my gut can sometimes be wrong. All of our guts can be wrong. We need a way to measure, quantitatively measure, the gut feeling. So how many of you say something appears to be amiss? Maybe. Good. Let's learn the quantifiable way of, of testing that. Yes, let's turn this off for a sec. I want to come back to it. I want to come back to it. Is red food coloring more expensive? That's a damn good question. I have no idea. Red food coloring is one that used to set me off when I was, when I was little. That was, the, that was the ADHD one. I think it's the worst color for you. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. in, in what way? I'll state, just out of curiosity. I don't know. I we, think that like, red food coloring is, like, they say it's so, like, it's the worst kind of color you can eat for your body or something. But how are they, how are they defining worse? Okay. <laughs> 13. Well, they claim 13, we got 7. Yeah. And if you'll notice our results over time. So they claim that there are an equal amount of red? Roughly the same as red, as yellow, as brown. They're all kind of the same. They're about 13% each. Wasn't red taken away for a while because of the carcinogenic? 
that yeah, uh, Not since 06. Yeah. Not since 06. Well, there, there wasn't originally a red. Back in the day, it was yeah. yellow, no, it was yellow, green, two browns, and orange. There were only five original colors. They added red later on, okay. and they added blue yeah. later on, and they it's took away green. light brown, and it's only dark brown. There were only five original colors. Red wasn't one of them. They added it in, I don't know when, I think it was in the 80s. Okay. But and previously, there were only five colors, light brown, dark, tan, they call it tan. Tan, brown, orange, green, and yellow. And then the red came, I think the blue came after that, and then the light brown went away, and now we have our six colors that we've got. I'm sure they did. They tend to do that every once in a while. So, and they, and that's totally fine. And that's kind of interesting. If you think about it from a PR point of view, it keeps people talking about your candy. It keeps you eating it. Although eating it is fun anyway, because it's fun candy. But the question is, don't give me these percentages if you're not going to stand behind them and actually, but the thing is, are the percentages wrong? I don't know. So, M&M &M percentages. Let's figure it out. M&M &M percentages. What are we testing, friends? Grab a template. Because this is a test. Yes, get a template if you need one. Yes, please, grab a template. What are we? It's definitely percentages. It's definitely proportions. How many proportions are we going to have? There's going to be six of them because there are six colors we're testing. Since we're testing proportions, we're testing little p's. I'll list them all out in the null hypothesis because Mars actually gave them to me. But what is a little p standing for in each? <coughs> Exactly, JC. It's the percentage of time, percentage of the colors, or the percentage of time we see. We see. Uh, you, can, you can say on average or not, it's implied, right? It's, I, you know, what, what's that helpful? We got orange, we got red, we got blue, we got brown, we got uh, red, uh, I got red already, we got orange, orange red, blue, brown, I don't forget. Yellow. Yellow. And. Orange, red, blue, brown, green. yellow, red. No, red's right there. Look at how I forget. Green. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Holy crap, so heavy. Yeah, so on average, the percentages we're going to see. And that's the, I, I love that JC still, I mean, that you're saying on average in there. I've been training my 105s to be saying that on average, on average, over time, on average, over time, on average, over time. That's all it is. It's not a promise that we're going to see 13% red in this sample. The question is, is 7% that we saw such a deviation that we go, mm, something's up, something's up. We need a margin of error around that average. So that's, that's the variable we're going to be testing. And there's going to be six different, per well, up to six different percentages. So as far as the hypotheses we're testing, the null is going to be what Mars told me it is. And what Mars told me, i got to look at this again. Mars told me that red and brown should be happening at 13%. So I'm going to put percentage of red and the percentage of brown should be 13%. That's one hypothesis. The percentage of yellow is 14, green is 16. Something is 20 and something is 24. Orange is 20, blue is 24. Let's make sure we can understand this. Blue, 24. There we go. That's what Mars tells me it should be. We should have 13% red, 13% brown. We should have 14% yellow. We should have 16% green, 20% orange, and 24% brown. So why is this the null? Because that's what they tell me it should be. I think it's different. Our data looks like it might be different. So that's a great so question. So our hypothesis is, is that they're not that. That, that, yeah, that, they're not that. They're not that. There's something so. different somewhere. Thank you, Tim. And that's a great question. Did you hear it? a great question. Why is that our null? Because that's the status quo. The status quo established by Mars says it's going to be this. That's that. Exactly. Our, our hypothesis is here's a pie chart of what we got, and here's a pie chart of what they said we should got, and a couple of you raised your hands and said that doesn't look right. Perfect. It's like looking at population density and sickness rates and seeing if they jive. So our question is if it's not right enough? It's very good. Yes. So, so you can state, the, the, the trick with stating the opposite of this yeah. is it's really hard to do mathematically. So JC, go ahead. Give it a whirl. It would just, yeah, exactly, exactly. Just the same thing and just cross out the equals. The pro, well, careful with that. Let me come back to that. The proportions, I'm going to try to paraphrase what you said. The proportions are somehow different than Mars claims. How's that? 
And if I do that, I cover myself pretty well. But if you just are saying somehow, we want statistical. Oh, no, 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 no. We're saying the same thing there, JC. JC's got a good point. We want statistical significance. When I say somehow different, I mean statistically somehow different. I'm not trying to say that it's yellow that's wrong, brown's okay, blue's wrong. I'm not trying to say that red's okay, brown's okay, but yellow sucks, and green sucks, and blue's okay, and orange is okay. Somehow, up here, at least, I'll put it a different way, at least one of the proportions is deviant or different. Is different than Mars claims. How's that? Is that better? That's a little more specific. I thank you for pointing that out. I was implying that with what I wrote, but it didn't come across as mathematics enough. But thank you very much. So what you don't want to say is that they're all not equal. Because that's not necessarily true. We saw that some of those percentages were within one or two percentage points, and we can live with that. The ones we can't live with are the ones that are seven, eight, and nine across, or half what they should be, or something along those lines. Those are the ones that are, that are hard to kind of swallow, if, if you will, as far as, I don't believe it. I don't believe that blue should be 24 when we only saw 14. Like, that's, that doesn't seem right. That seems like it's too few blue for what they're claiming. I can probably live with 14% yellow where we got 15% yellow. That's probably just saying my error. But the question is, and again, this is back to on average, how far do you deviate before you go, there's something wrong right there? And that's what today, that's what goodness of fit tests are all about. What you're trying to see is how well did our data fit this distribution? And it seems that it fit it kinda, and then it didn't fit it kinda. This gives us a mechanism to see where it didn't fit. Make sense? What's the next thing we gotta do? So do you not write that? Do you do not, say that again. Do we not write it? Well, you could. Oh, sweet Jesus. You'd have 63 things to write, JC. How did I get 63 things? What the hell did I just say 63 things? JC's, JC, and I, I thank you, sister, for saying this. She wants to write out. Well, I know I don't want to write out. No, you don't want to write it out. No, but I, my question is, how did I get the number 63? This is a bit of a 244, 243 throwback question. It's not six exclamation point, is it? It's close. Damn close. It's two to the sixth power. Minus one. Here's the deal. Either each of the colors matches the percentage Mars said, or it doesn't. So for each of the colors, you have two choices. Either it matches or it doesn't. That's a two choice. Flip of a coin, heads or tails, matches, doesn't. For six, two to the six is 64. Fair enough? Except for if one doesn't match, then for sure another one doesn't Not necessarily. Why? Because you can spread the non match If one's too heavy, for example, the other five, on average, have to be too light. But if you spread that lightness across all five, it might not be significantly low. So it could be that red's too heavy, but the other five are just fine. It could be that brown's too heavy, and the other five are just fine. It could be that yellow's too heavy. It could be that yellow and brown are both too heavy or too light. And then, you see what I'm getting at? You don't want to have to list all of those out, because you have 63. This is one of them right here. One of those matches is they all match. That's why it's minus one. That's why it's minus 63 and not 64, because one of the 64 is that they're all fine. One of the 64 is that they all suck. That, it's the, it can all mismatch. But then there's all those ones in between. Like for ours, it looks like three are good and three aren't. Right? Three are good and three aren't. Well, how many ways can you have that? Is it these three? And those three are okay? Is it these three? And these three are... Uh, I don't want to list all that crap out. This, 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 this encapsulates, if you will, all of it in one state. But it's okay to write it. Oh, God! Please do! Okay. I mean, we're going to vote that it's okay right now because, because that concisely says, I'd rather have you write that and move on with the data analysis than get hung up in, oh, I got 61, I'm missing two. Mm. Yeah. Good. Michael! <laughs> Theoretically, couldn't you just do PR equals P or N? So red and brown does not equal 13. It's 1 equals, so H not equals, so therefore H1 is doesn't equal, but then you just do OR for any of them. Sure, but that's still in, 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 in mathematical ease. It's the, it's the same problem. You have to test every single case at that point. You're supposed to do the hypothesis before you do all the testing. No, no, I think what Michael's saying is before we do all the testing. But he's saying once you have your hypotheses, but you're still going to have 63 here. Sure. I, I like the way you do it. I, I just think it's easier for us. And JC, I love what you said. Because mathematically, yes, you have to write it all out. But this is exactly the same reason back in 243 why we learned about at least. Because it became much easier to do one minus that than to try to outline all of it. Remember that I used it when I went to the chickens at the store. 
right? The guy goes, there's a 90% chance that it's a girl. I said, that means there's a one in three chance there's a boy in this box. He said, how the hell did you do that? I said, well, the chance of all girls is about two-thirds, so the chance of at least one rooster is the other one-third. I said, I'm going to tell everybody that from now on. I said, hell again, you will. And there was a new guy there this year, so I got to tell him again. And he was once again amazed by it. It's like magic. If you know mathematics, you know magic. You need it. I need what? You need it. I know. <laughs> cool? All right, errors. What would a type one be? What would a type one? It's false positive, which would mean that Mars is correct, but it isn't. We're saying that Mars is correct. And, and, and actually, thank you for saying that, Tim, verbally. Be careful when you guys are writing down what your errors are. This pocket is broken. When you're writing your errors down in your quizzes, I've noticed that some people are saying, like for this one, Mars is correct when it isn't. They can't be both. They're either correct or wrong. The question is, what are you saying about Mars? What are you saying in type one error? We're agreeing with Mars. Are we on a type 1? No, we're saying that Mars is wrong. We're saying that proportions are different when in fact Mars is correct. That's falsely positive. A positive test result means you believe the status quo is broken. If it's a false positive, that means you believe it's broken when it actually isn't. Which means you say Mars is off in at least one of its colors, but in fact the colors are fine and you got deviant samples. That's what a false positive is. So just be careful with how you're phrasing it when you go into your research worlds, because the population can't be right and wrong at the same time. But this hypothesis can't be right and wrong. It's either right or it's wrong. It's saying the, 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 making a claim on that, when in fact the opposite is true. Just like a false negative would be saying, totally fine, but they're not. That would be a false negative, meaning being we believe this, so Mars's percentages of its candy are totally, totally fine, on average. To use your word again, JC, which I love. But we're wrong because they're actually off and we missed it. There's almost no chance of that happening with our data, FYI. Go ahead. Should we say they are off? Should we say when at least one of them is off? Sure. That, that, that's getting a little bit semantical, but totally fine. I'm always up for semantics. It's good. And this is pretty stupid in the game. No. The type 1 and type 2 is referring to our hypothesis. It's referring to your decision you make based on your data. No, no, it's okay. but it's the same back and forth every We're time. We're always looking at the hypothesis. That, that's the point, right? Okay. The point is, this is the status quo. This is your belief about what's actually going on. I mean, the whole point of an error is that which one do you believe? And you can be wrong. Type 1 is you believe this when you should have believed this. Type 2 is you believe this when you should have believed this. Yeah. That's by definition. Okay, say that one more time. Sure. Type one. You believe this when you should have believed this. Now realize that when I ask for a contextual error, this is not good enough. This is just the this is a template. You believe this, you should have believed this, type one. You believe this, you should have believed this. That's a type two. That's a false negative. Just flip flopped. And that's just what, it's, that's the way the errors are, are defined. I mean, I wish I had a better reason than that. It's just how they've been handed down to us. That's it. It's okay. It's fine. You need definitions at some point, right? Right. Cool. All right. Which one's worse? You get to decide. I'm not sure this really matters. <laughs> I'm not sure this really matters. Type one's worse. Would you describe the unit company that, you know, should be described That's totally fine. Even though for 14, for uh, eight straight years they've had the wrong percentages, I'm not bitter. I'm not bitter. No, that's good. Crying wolf might be. Uh, no, they're not. It's only one coupon. We'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. I'm not pissed. We'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. We'll come back. I promise. We'll come back. So the reason I like this example, other than the fact that I get to get you guys sugar to get.